Hi everyone and welcome back to the shack. I'm in the middle of at least four separate projects, all of which I'm waiting for parts to complete. So I thought this week I'd instead turn my attention to something that's taken me a long while to get around to. This, the A500 Mini from Retro Games, which I received as a review copy just after the review embargo had been lifted, entirely my fault as I didn't complete the non-disclosure agreement in time and perhaps my lack of urgency on that was telling in itself. Unfortunately, this meant that by the time I did receive the unit, even though it was only a few days after the embargo, the net was already flooded with reviews and I honestly didn't think I had anything that I could add. I mean, this thing has been under the microscope, made to run workbench, transplanted into other cases and generally ripped apart and put back together again by every other channel out there. Now, consider that anyone who really, really loves Amigas will probably already have a real one, perhaps with a Pi Storm or some other accelerator board and storage solution. Anyone who just loves the Amiga may not be willing to hold on to or invest in the real hardware, but may well have a Raspberry Pi running Pi Amiga or a Mr. FPGA solution to get their Amiga kicks. Those who just casually like the Amiga or perhaps never even had one and are curious about the machine are probably happy enough with emulators. So I wondered just who this machine was aimed at. If I hadn't been given a copy for review, would I have bought one? Well, dropping all of my baggage and preconceptions at the door, let's take a look. Here at The Shack, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCB Way. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices. And it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding, PCB Way also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. Well, I'm going to rip the Band-Aid off right now. No, I wouldn't have bought one of these. For me personally, who has multiple real Amigas and also has a Raspberry Pi Pi Amiga setup, this A500 Mini is of course a fun thing to own with a few good games, a nice mouse and joypad and a really nice friendly user interface, but it's 120 quid. That kind of money would also buy a 4 gig Raspberry Pi, a fully licensed copy of Amiga Forever in order that you can legally own the Amiga ROM, with the added benefit of having an emulated Amiga on your PC for your trouble, a wired mouse, a pair of joypads and a wired real keyboard, something the Mini lacks, and also the micro HDMI cable and power supply. Check in the video description for links to all of those things adding up to 130 quid, only a 10 or more than this A500 Mini and with so many more features and potential. So for me, I'd go for the Pi Amiga every time, but then I love tinkering, have no fear in downloading software and messing about with config, so I'm going to outright state that because of that, I'm not the target demographic for the A500 Mini. Now my friend had an Amiga back in the day before moving on to PCs and then onto the PlayStation and onwards as a pure gamer and this might appeal to him to get a bit of the old feelies. So I asked him, would he want one? And his answer was not for 120 quid. It's a lot of money for a few hours of nostalgia. So I guess he's not the target demographic either. So who is? Well, I don't know. Perhaps it's mums and dads buying these to introduce their kids to the pleasures of retro gaming or because it triggers a bit of nostalgia over a computer they had as a kid and if so, I wonder how many are sitting around as desk ornaments once the initial novelty wears off. I guess some people will buy one because it's so darn gorgeous and I can get on board with that, it is almost a reason to own one, but really? For this money, you could buy a non-working A500 just to look at. But the weird thing is, as a concept, I really like it. 
and I like Retro Games as a company. They've made this like all of their other products, with care and attention to detail, fantastic quality and with a really nice user interface, and they're flying off the shelves so I can't fault the business model, but I worry about longevity for the people who are buying them. The selection of games is limited to 25, with some perhaps questionable titles, and I'm also sure licensing costs limited the inclusion of some true Amiga classics. I mean, where's Lemmings, Robocod or Dune 2? And yes, I know you can get all of those on USB and install Workbench and use WHD Load etc etc, but then you're back into may as well use a Pi territory. The C64 Mini and Maxi had 64 games, wouldn't it have been nice to have the A500 with 500 games instead of just 25? Some very clever folk have also managed to get Workbench running on this A500 Mini, but it runs from a USB stick and at USB 2 speeds, so it's not exactly nippy. It's a compromise. Like much of the experience with the A500 Mini, it's about being quite impressed with what it can do, considering what it is. Now, you might think I'm being really negative about this, but believe me, I'm not. I was the same with the C64 Mini, didn't buy one. But the thing is, when the Maxi came out with a full keyboard and virtual disk support etc, I could see the potential for a usable machine rather than a paperweight, and I grabbed one immediately. The same with the VIC-20, essentially a reskin of the C64, as both versions emulate both machines but it's a fully functional machine that you can use to the full potential of the original. So perhaps for me, it's not about the novelty or the nostalgia, it's about having a modern, usable replacement that's highly compatible, highly usable and doesn't feel like a compromise. And for me, and I suspect a lot of other true Amiga fans, that's an A500 Maxi with a bit more horsepower, a working keyboard and some real functionality. Networking would be a must. OCS, ECS, AGA support and well then retro games, you can take my money as long as it was still achievable for around the 150 to 175 pound mark. At that point, I could happily use my Raspberry Pi for something else. I could put my real Amiga safely back in its box and I'd have a nice, solid, reliable solution for 99.9% .9 of anything Amiga related I might want to do. Over to you, Retro Games. Right, that's it for this perhaps controversial episode and as always please leave your comments below on what you think of the A500 Mini. Did you buy one? Are you still using it or is it now a display piece? I'd love to know where these sit in the market and in the home. If you like the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of new content. If you'd like to support us, jump to our Ko-Fi page to find out how, there's a link in the description. And until next time in the Retro Shack, it's goodbye from me.